I'm Dave Netto. I am the elder director here at the Mi'kmaq Nation, and what I do for work here is help the elders and have a congregational meal, and I deliver meals. I do appointments for them. You know, I'll bring them to doctor's appointments. I bring them to uh, bring them to grocery shopping, whatever they need. Uh, we'll we'll try to provide. If we can't provide it, we'll have somebody else provide it. But I'm pretty much in charge of that. What we do, we provide meals. We go over to the houses with our people who are isolated and just to see their smiley faces to come over here because there's half, a lot of them are lonely, especially out in the country. A lot of them are lonely and they come over and they, they see you, you know, and they, they love, you know, they love the food, you know, and uh, then you can sit down, talk with them for a little bit, you know, and that congregates, you know, good uh, vibes with them, you know, and good health, you know. So the importance of the elders are, you know, they're the ones that got us to this point, right? They got me here. Um, a lot of people that I know have passed on, but their knowledge, right, stays with me. So their knowledge is living on. And that's like, you know, everything in this world, it's, uh, it's just this circle. You know, the elders are um, closer to, you know, their way out and uh, they deserve that respect because of all the time that they put in, you know, being a tribal member, participating, keeping us alive. The elders need to be taken care of because they shouldn't have to work hard anymore. They have done their hard work. We need to be catering to the elders a little bit more, I think, you know, because they're the ones that created all of this for us. You know, without the elders, then there wouldn't be any tribe, you know, so we need to be grateful. We need to remain grateful for that. Uh, so when we talk about elders, um, they are the ones that know of the past. They were the ones that were there. And, and you know, for me, my 47 years, I can recollect the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and so on. And within that short time, a lot has changed. But when you think about somebody that's even way past when, um, you have to think like all of this technology was not there. They had to build it. They had to build all of these technologies that we have today. And so um, we thank them for that. But not only that, but it's also we have to first learn how they went through what they went through so that we can move forward. And, uh, and, and, and there aspect of, of like I'm a carpenter so growing up I was carpenter and plumber and all this so now the carpentry and plumbing trade has changed but still when you are learning carpentry they're not going to give you the air air gun here's a hammer and a nail learn from the very basics first and foremost they're not going to give you the skill saw they're going to give you that little saw and so you have to start from the very basics and that's where these elders came from. They came from the very basics. They came from an aspect where you worked, you know, not just eight hour days, but you had to work because um, it was a means of survival. Waking up early in the morning to, to, to take care of the, the animals before you went to school, you know, and that was their lifestyle. After when they got home, they had to take care of the animals again prior to getting their their dinner and going to bed. So a lot of this was hard work ethics. Um, making the baskets, it's easy today. Chainsaw, bring it home, pound it. Back then, they didn't have a chainsaw, they had a buck saw. And using a buck saw, you didn't have a vehicle, so you had a sled and you would have to drag all of that by hand. So everything that we that that they did they did 10 times as much as we do and i find that even still we complain about it you know even still i'll go in the woods and i'll cut and like and i'm getting bit by mosquitoes and here i have 
all this sprays, all these different things that they didn't have back then, and I'm complaining. So for me, it's not just the respect it, that, that they have, it's our admiration. Our admiration of how they live through such racist times, how they live through the, the wars that went through, and these wars, they impacted the world. How they lived through such hard times where um, you couldn't order, you know, um, by the phone. You couldn't order fast food by the phone. There was no fast food. You know, there was food that you made. And the only time it was fast food was when you had to chase it. And so that was their fast food. And so um, uh, for me, I feel like respecting elders is one of those few small formalities um, that we have to we we have to learn from our elders because when an elder passes away it's almost like a library has burned down because of all their knowledge all their expertise all of the stuff that they accumulated is gone because even with just a carpenter or a farmer they know like during this time is when it's the best time to harvest your food. During this time is the best time to, you know, this is how you untwist two by four or whatever, you know what I mean? So their knowledge is on that basis. And think of it, if in another 20 years or so, when we're grown up, if we don't learn anything and all our elders have passed on, we're not gonna, our little children will learn anything and what if they want to? And they'll have to look back in books and read about it, but they'll never learn anything, not, the, not how it really was. Yeah. If we're not talking about it or sitting in a circle showing the kids that we're talking about these things and explaining these things, even the kid may be bored, but they're still sitting there. They're hearing it. And then sometime in the future, they're going to like, like even for me, when I share some of the stories, I reminisce when I was a kid, what my mom and my uncle said and done. And I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. And, and it puts that connection together. And, and knowing that they knew a lot more. What we did here, this generation, our, this, uh, this elders we, here today is that we, I like to think uh, as, a, as a team, as a whole, I'm talking about the whole band, rustic band of Micmacs here, that as a whole, we opened doors for this, for this generation, and in that respect, uh, we're going to try to keep our culture alive because we had the resources now to do, to work with. Before we had nothing. Now we have resources, and although we worked hard back then to get recognition, you have to work harder still today to to achieve what you want. You know, so I mean, it's, you just can't. You just can't settle back just because you got recognition, you know, and say, you expect everything on a silver platter. It don't work that way. You got to work that much harder. So, I mean, I like to think as, as, a, as a team, you know, we all did this when we were just trying to achieve our recognition. Now we have it, and I'm glad that the doors are open for our future generation. That's where, that's where it lies, our children today. They need that. And, and I guess we're very concerned about our culture and our traditional ways, and, and that's slowly coming back, slow but sure, and it's going to get there. It's going to get there.